Hello everyone. <clears throat> My name is Claudia Ciuca. I am a project officer of, uh, at CINEA, European Climate Infrastructure and Environment Executive Agency, um, in the unit Integrated Transport and uh, Urban Mobility. I will be the moderator of today's session together with Thierry Gauget um, from Forum for European Highway and Research Laboratories, and we will have a cluster of three projects. The session of today brings at our attention another area very important where research is needed. Um, we will see the preliminaries, as I mentioned, of uh, a cluster of three projects where that were funded in 2020 under Mobility for Growth, Coal, Smart, Green, and Integrated Transport. Uh, the focus of the session is on the um, key element that is part of the overall performance of transport system, that is infrastructure, road infrastructure. The work done by this cluster of projects will contribute to the transport safety on roads, <coughs> therefore to the goal set by transport white paper on the close to zero roads fatalities by 2050, and to the sustainable development um, uh, goals, and not, on, not, fine, not lastly, to contribute to the decongestion of roads on infrastructure by increasing the reliability. Um, we want to see uh, at the end of this project that um, in the near future, the research done on the use of robotized equipment, drones, automated or some automated piloted solution will demonstrate the potential for um, for the risk of uh, workers' uh, exposures to, uh, in the life traffic or um, um, uh, construction mach uh, machines, the potential to decrease the, the availability uh, of transport network and the potential to reduce the cost of repeatable tasks and uh, safety <coughs> upgrades. I will not um, uh, skip you more. We will go straight to the first project, and I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Pedro Adias Sanchez, professor at University uh, of Vigo in Spain, that will present infrared project. Thank you, Claudia, for the introduction. Um, my name is uh, Pedro Arias. I am a coordinator, the project coordinator of uh, Infrared Project. And the project, the, the topics of the project is uh, gathered in the title, Maintaining Integrity, Performance, and Safety of the Road Infrastructures Through Autonomous Robotized Solutions and Modernization. Okay, the um, uh, short project overview uh, about the results. The project is uh, a project for 20, uh, 42 months uh, with uh, uh, 669 uh, 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 person months dedicated to the project and with a total budget, uh, bu budget uh, 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 around about uh, 5 million of euros. The project consortium is formed for uh, partners from eight uh, different countries and um, with uh, different profiles, as is typical in this kind of projects, with universities, um, uh, despite the University of Vigo, University of Minho, Kohl, and Darmstadt in German, uh, with um, uh, industrial partners like uh, MOBA from German, RINA, uh, NTS, IPSS, um, 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 IMC, um, um, another um, um, uh, non-profit partner like uh, FAIR and CC, um, finally, last but not least, the owner of the infrastructure is at FINAG, is the responsible of the uh, in transport infrastructures in Austria. Uh, the <coughs> The uh, overview of the project is, um, we can summarize, like you can see in this slide, is formed for five technological areas. Um, and the project is focusing on the road bed, and particularly on the roads paved with asphalts, right? Um, uh, and the, the project is uh, entirely in, uh, in five uh, technological areas. 
Uh, and the first one is about the autonomous robotized machines for construction, upgrade, and long, large maintenance interventions. The other technological area is about autonomous robotized machine for routine periodic or periodic maintenance of pavement. And the, the next one is about the modul modularization of road construction uh, through industrial prefabricated uh, solutions. In this case, it's a, a safety, a modular safety barrier. And the technological area four is for um, collaborative operations, some safety comms robots with drums um, for works, uh, thumbs emitation and signaling. Um, finally, uh, the, the technological area five is upgrading of management systems to ensure safe, safer operations and maintenance. And these uh, technological areas are divided in different uh, uh, products or different results. And I summarize here in this slide and in the next one. Um, our intention is to, to develop autonomous uh, mm, uh, working road construction train for power, uh, for, for power, feeder and roller. At this moment, uh, the, the, the advance of this, uh, of this task is about 30%. Um, another uh, objective of the project, another intention is to develop a device for automated lay-down of fiber optic sensors uh, during the, pa the paving process and to make to the same time, okay, and to try to monitorize the behavior of the paper um, um, okay, with the time. Uh, another prototype of autonomous robotized uh, head to repair potholes and cracks. Um, uh, this, uh, the, the state of this task is about 40% at this moment. And another one is the autonomous robotized working line merging robot at 10%. And the, mm, the another mm, uh, precast concrete element and, and safety barrier element, like you can see in the slides, at, uh, at uh, 30%. And the achievements uh, are, all the achievements are gathered in this slide, or another more is about the first, is uh, next is about the collaborative operation uh, uh, between safety comp robots and drums for um, uh, work uh, thumb segmentation and signaling in areas where the, the other machines uh, will be working, right? Um, another task is about the, the pavement management system at grade. Um, um, into account the robotics, the information that the robotics supply for the, for the system. Um, uh, we are working as well in a digital twin solution for a uh, pavement management system. And last but not least, uh, the tra uh, we will work in, a, we are working in a traffic management system upgrade and considering these uh, robotic solutions, this um, pavement management system, et cetera. Um, uh, the results, uh, we have gathered the results in this, uh, in this, um, uh, modes to make a protection of the results or to put in the market the results. Um, our intention, our first uh, intention is to make a patent of the autonomous pa uh, pa paper sensor control system. Um, for intellectual property rights protection, the asphalt uh, can be candidated, the asphalt mixture to repair the small potholes and cracks. Um, for the other side, to um, uh, we are developing some products and service to, to shift to the market. And we have identified here four different uh, products or solutions. Um, the autonomous line marking robot and support. Um, the drone system for monitoring work thumbs. Um, uh, upgrade the system pavement management system and the fiber optic solutions for payment uh, damage detection. Um, the product to the market is a multifunctional precast concrete element. Um, finally, the service to the market, the digital twin based on uh, add-on application. And this, um, this uh, proposal is based not just in the characteristics of the product and as well as considering the interest of the partners that are working in this, in this, uh, in this field, right? 
the expected impact of the project, um, um, uh, we are, uh, I am summarized this expected impact in main three components. Uh, um, upgrade of management system for decision making, taking into account the introduction of robots or robotics in this field of work. The uh, autonomous robotized solution for work zone segmentation and signaling based on drones. Um, the autonomous robotized interventions and modular solutions. Okay, the, the impact uh, perhaps can be summarized in these three components. Um, as well, uh, talking about figures, our intention is to, according to the, 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 the our proposal and the terms of the call, uh, reduce the fatal accidents uh, at uh, 50%, reduce the traffic disruptions and routine maintenance costs at 20%, and increase the network capacity at 20% as well. And this, uh, uh, the our project uh, is uh, according to different uh, politics and, uh, and priorities of the European Commission, and specifically uh, about three these um, um, uh, politics, right? And uh, in relation with the smart green integrated transport, our project are developing some solutions for uh, automa uh, automation, uh, some process, some task, in relation with the visual zero, specifically visual zero, specifically for safety. Uh, our uh, project are mm, uh, working on solutions for uh, increase the safety in the areas in the roads with uh, a maintenance works. Um, uh, finally, in relation with the digital Europe, our uh, project is working in a different solutions based in robots, in automation, in, uh, in um, um, different uh, intelligent management systems, etc., that will increase to the digital Europe uh, um, uh, internet. Um, <coughs> uh, about the expected impact, um, um, I have summarized in this slide uh, 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 the impact at this moment. And let me remember you that we are in the month uh, about uh, 18th, right? Um, uh, we have um, uh, different uh, mm, uh, uh, strategies for communication, dissemination, and exploitation. Um, a website, and this is the, the number of the visitors at this moment, and the social media with different channels, um, uh, like uh, um, LinkedIn, um, um <coughs> and another more. Um, uh, the followers at this moment is uh, 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 330 followers. Um, at this moment, we have participated, uh, we have took part in different workshops and other activities, plus than 10 activities. Um, in relation with the publications, no scientific, uh, 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 classical publications, we have uh, at this moment, we made a different uh, five uh, publications in uh, local medias and more international uh, journals, right? Um, <coughs> talking about the scientific papers, at this moment, we have published uh, five uh, papers between journal, uh, scientific journals and Congress, like uh, um, TRL, uh, Transport Research Arena, and the um, road uh, congress, etc. And of course, we are in cooperation with the another with the sister uh, project um, in the uh, this call, Omicron and Iron. The, rep the representatives are here, and we have several meetings uh, until now, virtual and physical meetings. Um, our intention is conforming the the project is uh, is um, advancing to increase the cooperation and in the in uh, the. the they make an um, uh, interchange of knowledge between the projects, etc. Um, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. We will go to the next presentation for Omicron project. We will have Jose Solid Hernandez that is coming from <coughs> Semosa. Should you have specific questions for uh, one of the presenters, we can use the opportunity at the end of the presentation. However, uh, if not, we will use the, the question and answer session. Thank you.
Thank you, Claudia. Um, <clears throat> so as you said, my name is Jose Solis and I work for the R&D department of uh, CEMOSA, uh, specifically on the transport uh, infrastructure mobility area. And I am the project coordinator of Omicron. So today I would like to give you a brief insight on, on the project. This is the content of my presentation. I will start uh, presenting Omicron in a nutshell, uh, followed by the objectives, uh, concept, and technologies of the project. And finally, with the project uh, impact and the next steps to be followed. Um, well, Omicron is, uh, is formed by a consortium of uh, 16 partners from seven different countries, um, multidisciplinary um, uh, group, um, we started in uh, May 2021, and we will finish in October 2024, so we are more or less halfway through the project. Um, and let's say this group uh, is formed by uh, research institutions and technology developers uh, working alongside ICT um, integrators, supported by uh, dissemination, communication, and exploitation experts that uh, aim to provide uh, new services and products to um, road contractors, civil engineering uh, experts, uh, road operators, and owners uh, within the uh, transport infrastructure of Europe. Um, the main goal of the project is the development of an intelligent road asset management platform, um, and we divide the objectives into three uh, areas. The first one, with respect to technical objectives, um, we aim to improve the, and digitalize the uh, inspection activities in roads as, as well as uh, to upgrade the safety in uh, these applications and in uh, work uh, road personnel. Um, we develop uh, smart road platforms for infrastructure managers alongside uh, robotic technologies um, and adaptive machinery in order to uh, automate uh, intervention actions. And we also develop tools to support uh, road decision making, uh, progressing towards predictive maintenance in specific use cases that I will present in the next uh, couple of slides. Um, we aim to implement and demonstrate all of these technologies in uh, European CEF corridors. Um, with respect to en environmental objectives, our uh, goal is to support ro the road sector in the uh, transition set by the European Green Deal. Um, uh, highlighting, let's say, the promotion of uh, asphalt for ultra thin layers in pavement rehabilitation and also fostering the use of uh, recycled um, uh, asphalt pavements. Um, in terms of socioeconomic objectives, in a nutshell, um, uh, we aim to reduce uh, road li lo uh, whole life costs, um, as well as uh, improving uh, road, safe, uh, road services and safety, and uh, working on the definition or the supporting to uh, require changes in legislation and or standards. So the concept of the project um, is shown is in these slides, and is, uh, it is based on four main pillars. Um, so we start with, uh, in the left-hand side, with uh, digital inspection, where we develop drones and inspection vehicles connected via V2X uh, communications in order to improve information that we provide to road users. The second pillar is uh, related to um, uh, the development of a road digital twin, uh, oriented to BIM and GIS, um, integrated information from legacy systems and from digital inspection technologies. The third pillar is related to decision uh, making, where we uh, use uh, AI technologies to assess the state of uh, assets in road, and we uh, aim to improve the way in which we perform uh, maintenance activities. And the fourth pillar is related to smart construction and intervention solutions, where we develop a modular robotic platform aided by VR and AR uh, technologies. We develop adaptive machinery, and uh, also we develop a methodology for modular and prefabricated um, construction. So I will now present uh, the state at which we are in all these uh, developments in the uh, next uh, couple of uh, slides. Um, starting with uh, digital inspection. 
um, we develop a, a UAV uh, management tool where we integrate multi UAV inspection capabilities and long range, low altitude inspection capabilities in order to improve the way in which we currently perform uh, these inspections. Um, the second point is related to terrestrial inspection vehicles where we are working on a, a innovative uh, sensor combination to, for reality reconstruction. And also we work on the uh, automation of the uh, inspection process of um, um, uh, roads, improving the way in which we uh, um, capture uh, parameters such as SFC or IRI. Finally, with respect to V2X uh, communications, um, we uh, develop this alongside CT CITS systems in order to improve the information that we provide to the user. Um, on, the on the second area, uh, with respect to predictive maintenance, um, as I said, uh, we are working on the development of a road digital twin um, which is a B, uh, beam GIS oriented digital representation of roads, um, integrating bo all the relevant resources and data from the infrastructure, as well as the analytics and the um, predictions that uh, we will, uh, that we're working on in the project. Um, thereby, this is closely related to our road uh, decision support tool, where we aim to assess road condition state of different assets and then optimize the way in which we perform uh, maintenance uh, actions. Um, the next area um, is related to the automation of intervention actions, and in this respect, um, the first development is uh, the robotic modular platform. So we uh, are developing um, a <coughs> such a platform in order to perform not just one various um, uh, uh, ordinary, extraordinary, and emergency intervention actions in roads. Um, and we have some use cases and as an example in the, in the project, including safety barrier replacement, uh, safe signaling during construction, installation of cones, um, sealing of surface pavement cracks, um, road asset cleaning, or uh, the removal of uh, line markings with uh, laser. Um, well, and in these two videos, you may see uh, the concept and some preliminary tests that we uh, have been performed. Um, the second uh, point is related to uh, the rehabilitation of surface pavement layers where we are integrated a, a set of uh, sensors, uh, including pavement and roller location, thermal control and weather conditions or uh, pavement surface textures uh, among others. And the objective is to analyze every step along the uh, paving uh, process in order to provide decision support information uh, to the operators. Um, in this way, we are also uh, promoting the use of greener pavements by using AUTLs and uh, recycled asphalt uh, pavements. Um, the last um, area related to um, this uh, robotic modular platform is related to um, AR and VR. So we work on uh, AR tools for worker support where we use various devices such as tablets, glasses, etc to support the robotic modular platform processes. Um, and we also develop a VR uh, platform, in this case for robot daily operation uh, of the uh, robotic modular platform, um, and also for the train of workers on, on specific maintenance uh, tasks. In this video, we may see some uh, the preliminary test for uh, daily operation, where we have on the left-hand side uh, virtual environment in Greece, which is moving uh, the real environment uh, in, in Spain uh, with the robot. Um, the last uh, area I would like to highlight is related to modular construction. In this case, modular construction of uh, bridge overpasses and of a particular type with uh, uh, reinforced concrete uh, elements on the sides and um, uh, steel elements in the at mid span. Um, the objective is to enable the use of prefabricates while reducing construction times and uh, reducing traffic disruptions on uh, construction um, <coughs> and thereby improving safety 
and improving the circularity of the solutions that are currently used in this particular um, type of um, uh, bridges. Um, well, this video is about one of the tests that we have carried out in the project uh, on this uh, solution. Um, last but not least, uh, we have uh, extensive cooperation with other projects. Um, well, uh, after the uh, presentation of uh, Pedro, uh, you may see that we have shared the uh, objectives with InfraRob and with Heron, as you will see um, now, uh, in terms of safety, better road services, and cost reduction. Um, we also have, as Pedro sa says, um, a periodic interaction in, in terms of uh, inspection, robotics, and asset management, uh, mainly. Um, but we also interact with other projects such as Isrium uh, with respect to the use of satellite information, which we believe would be a, a very good uh, addition to the platform that we are trying to develop in, in Omicron. Um, and finally, we also have a close contact with Piloting, uh, coordinated by Catec, one of our partners, uh, on advanced uh, inspection systems with uh, drones mainly. Um, in terms of project impact, uh, this is all subjected to, uh, well, this is very much related to the, our demonstration uh, methodology, which is divided in three um, stages. Uh, the first one is related to preliminary TRL four to five testing. Um, the second, this leads to the second stage for technical demonstration of specific technologies uh, from TRLs ranging five to seven in um, uh, specific locations in Porto, Seville, Guadalajara, and Valencia. Um, and this leads to the final stage, uh, the final demonstration of the whole uh, Omicron platform at TRL 7. Um, our project impact is uh, based on four main KPIs. As you may see, they are uh, very similar to what uh, Pedro presented again. Um, the first one is related to the reduction of fatal accidents of road users and deployed personnel due to maintenance works by uh, 50%. Um, the second one is the reduction of traffic due to maintenance works uh, by uh, 20%. The third one is the decrease in routine maintenance costs by 20%. And the fourth one is the increase in network capacity by um, 20%. Um, to conclude, um, I would like to provide uh, what are the next uh, uh, steps of the project. So we are currently continuing in the technology developments in terms of sensing, robotics, uh, digital twins, uh, decision support systems, etc. cetera. Um, we have a next, uh, let's say, milestone as we have a next general advisory board uh, meeting uh, approaching. So we have, um, let's say, a, an open and dynamic uh, concept for external advisory board. Um, the next, uh, we have uh, meetings more or less every six months. The next one is on the 31st of May uh, of this year. Um, so if you are interested and you want to know more about the project, please don't hesitate to contact me or the uh, external advisory board chairman, uh, Jesus Rodriguez, as uh, let's say this is a dynamic and open uh, group and we have um, online sessions for uh, those that are interested. Let's say the technology developments and the feedback from this external advisory group uh, will lead us to load the, the low TRL demonstration starting from August 2023. And this will also lead to the final demonstration at uh, TRL 7 in April 2024. Um, and the, the end of the project is um, set at the, uh, October 2024 with evaluation and uh, exploitation analysis of the uh, project. Thank you very much for your attention. I would be very happy to answer any questions in the open round table. Thank you, Jose. Uh, if there are no questions, specific question at this point, uh, I would like to invite the third project represented by Nicolaos Bacalos, researcher at the Institute of Communication and Computer Science from Greece. Thank you.
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, similarly to uh, the previous two presenters, I'm here to present uh, the Hiron project, which is the third project uh, presented uh, in this session. Uh, and Hiron stands for Improved Robotic Platform to Perform Maintenance and Upgrading uh, Roadworks. Uh, a little bit about the project. Uh, we are running for 48 months. Uh, we started on July 2021 uh, and the finish is on May 2025. Uh, our budget is a little bit under 5 million euros. Uh, we, are, uh, we have a consortium uh, of 12 partners from seven different countries. Uh, and as you can see here in the, the, the graphic there, we are similarly to infrared and Omicron, our sister projects, we're on the execution, let's say, side of uh, the maintenance procedure, uh, uh, working on uh, output from other previous projects. So uh, what we're doing in here on, in a nutshell, uh, we are targeting very specific uh, uh, maintenance and upgraded uh, procedures. Uh, we are uh, focusing on sealing cracks, on patching potholes, on the rejuvenation of asphalt, uh, the replacement of uh, replaceable urban pavement elements, uh, repainting of road markings, and we also want to support both the pre- and post-intervention phase by uh, creating techno developing technologies for visual inspection of the maintenance uh, to uh, increase uh, the awareness in the pre-intervention phase and also with dispensing and removing tra traffic cones for isolating the area of uh, intervention and then uh, after the intervention is executed, uh, bringing it back to, uh, to normal operations. To do that, uh, we need to develop uh, quite a lot of things. We start with the robotics platform. We start with uh, an unmanned vehicle uh, that uh, uh, needs to be integrated and have all the necessary tools uh, to actually uh, perform the maintenance procedures. Uh, on this robotic platform, we need an optimized control framework where uh, the uh, robotic arms and the other tools are being handled. To achieve this, uh, we need uh, to establish uh, specific sensing uh, and communication capabilities. Essentially, we need to be able uh, to see what's happening uh, there and uh, correlate uh, our, sensing, uh, our sensing data with uh, the control framework. And to do so, we're developing an AI toolkit uh, to uh, increase the situational awareness uh, from the sensing uh, data uh, to actually perform and create some uh, characteristics and find out uh, what we're doing uh, beforehand. This is right now uh, the main uh, where we are the project we are developing this stuff but to actually perform our integrations we need to establish the communication architecture we need to be able to establish service provisioning on site uh, through proper communication channels uh, and also there is uh, the visualization uh, elements so we are also developing a decision support system and an incident management system uh, both of those are going to support uh, VR and AR elements uh, for uh, the maintenance procedure. And finally, we are uh, we're targeting an on-site integration because the output of the project, similarly to Omicron and similar to, uh, to our other sister projects, uh, is a TRL7 uh, demonstration. So uh, we need to be integrated and actually perform the demonstrations on site uh, instead of the laboratory. So uh, a little bit about the achievements of the projects up until now, uh, and we start with the robotics platform. Uh, first of all, we have uh, developed and integrated on uh, the, an, uh, an unmanned ground vehicle uh, a number of different mapping algorithms, such as uh, our tab map, a Lego Loam and others, and, uh, the, and th those mapping algorithms are tuned to accept both the robot odometry and uh, have been tested using uh, cameras. 
uh, and we are also developing a, a 3D mapping, uh, a 3D mapping uh, uh, structure uh, that is combined with obst uh, obstacle avoidance models. So we can, uh, we are developing technologies where we can efficiently maintain uh, a 3D uh, world space and move around it, and also configure uh, a robot to avoid obstacles on. Uh, uh, 2.5D there, not uh, a full 3D, let's say, uh, aspect. Uh, currently, uh, we are adapting uh, the UGV uh, to actually support our use cases. Uh, obviously, because we have additional tools on the robot, we need to uh, have additional electrical support to power the tools. Uh, because uh, we need to manipulate the robot beforehand, uh, we are developing changeable modules to support all the planned interventions, <laughs> and obviously we are mounting the robot with multiple camera sensors and other types of sensors, such as depth sensors, LiDAR, etc., uh, in order to uh, make sure that we can uh, use the, the robot and move uh, uh, in the maintenance area. We are on the simulation stage right now, but right now in the project we are performing stability simulations uh, for the robot. Moving on to the robotic arm and controlling the robotic arm. Uh, so right now we are providing a low level control uh, set, uh, control platform for the robotic arm. Uh, we have a pipeline which focuses on tracking uh, the performance and stability with variable loads. Uh, and also we are adapting different sensitive devices and strategies in order to uh, increase performance. Uh, and uh, we are assigning basic actions for motor drivers on the robot arm uh, and the low-level actuators. Uh, we are doing this in order for the robot arm to be able to essentially uh, do uh, a lot of the interventions and uh, perform a lot of the, the work needed for the interventions. We are seeing here the robotic arm actually trying to uh, patch a pothole, let's say. So we see on, on the left-hand side how we can spread things uh, using the robotic arm to actually patch the, the pothole. Uh, and the final, let's say, uh, technological pillar uh, of our achievements has to do with uh, both the sensing uh, and uh, the relevant uh, AI and deep learning modules to, uh, to understand what the, what the sensing data show us and to increase situational awareness. Uh, so uh, we have uh, established object detect, we have extended object detection methods uh, to uh, identify in real time uh, what uh, areas of interest uh, for our project. So uh, potholes, cracks, uh, road markings that have been blurred. Uh, and we see there that uh, using uh, camera mounted on dashboard mounted cameras, we have uh, quite uh, excellent performance. Uh, we have extended this uh, for uh, visual inspections through drones. Obviously, as the distance uh, is uh, increase, as the distance increase, the distance increases, uh, the performance uh, lowers. But uh, we are still able to uh, identify quite a lot of things, and we can do this pretty much in real time. So we can see here. Uh, an original video uh, from a dash camera and on the left hand side we can see the object detection methods and identifying all the different areas of interest. Uh, this is happening in real time, this is not post-process, let's say. Uh, this can happen actually uh, in real time for the object detection part. But beyond identifying a general area of intervention, let's say, through the object detection, we need to actually extract information about the geometry of the issue. Uh, so we are also proceeding in the developing of uh, uh, some segmentation algorithms. We can see here, I'm not going to go into too much detail, technical detail, but we can see here uh, how uh, specific uh, architectures are performing uh, for uh, actually not only identifying the area of, let's say, a pothole, uh, but actually uh, targeting this pothole and identifying the, the entirety geometry of the pothole. The same thing happens for road markings, for cracks. Uh, uh, 
So uh, we are actually developing deep learning models uh, to essentially be able to track all those things and assess uh, the what is happening on the road, both for the pre-intervention uh, phase, uh, for the planning, let's say, of the intervention, and also during the intervention to identify whether uh, what we did was okay and whether we are, uh, what's the status of our intervention. So uh, regarding impact, uh, we have, uh, let's say, two different, uh, we can see impact in two different granularities for the midterm. Uh, similarly to our system projects, we aim at a reduction of exposure uh, for the maintenance personnel. Uh, we think that the sensing capabilities uh, that we are developing can increase the preparedness and can allow the robotic R platform to at least initially act as an assistant uh, to uh, maintenance personnel. Uh, we are also targeting a reduction in traffic disruptions due to maintenance. Uh, we can use what we're developing for faster execution of maintenance actions. Uh, we can increase the situational awareness in the planning phase uh, and know exactly uh, and have exactly uh, the intervention plan before we're actually executing it. And we can also use uh, the, the robotics platform, again, as an assistance to maintenance per personnel. Uh, and what is uh, the long-term impact, let's say, uh, of Heron? And I believe this is the same for uh, our sister project as well. Uh, we are targeting very specific interventions that uh, they might seem small in the beginning. Uh, patching a pothole might seem like a small intervention, but at scale, uh, I, we think uh, that this is actually uh, quite helpful because we can continuously monitor the road infrastructure through the technologies that both Heron and Infrarob and Omicron are developing. Uh, we can schedule the maintenance pro pro procedures beforehand in order to uh, not uh, have issues with the traffic, uh, with uh, uh, disrupting traffic. Uh, and we can, uh, this way we can increase the road infrastructure life cycle and also minimize accidents. Uh, that's it uh, from me. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, I will be happy to answer your questions in the following presentation. Thank you very much for the last uh, presentation. Um, <coughs> um, just a few words before I give the floor to Thierry. Uh, these are three research projects in a cluster, and all of them, as you can see, target and address very uh, specific and targeted <coughs> aspects. Um, our midway and our research projects, the tier level at the end will be tier 7 and I do hope that already um, catch your attention, and I do hope that you'll have plenty of questions to ask. Now I'll give the floor to Thierry to moderate the question and answer session. Thank, Thank you. you. Or maybe then we'll probably stand up. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. I think that there is no need for the moment to make a, a summary. I will do it afterwards. But probably we can start first by, uh, let's say, opening uh, uh, the room for the question time. So do you have, first of all, clarification maybe for the, the speakers? Silence doesn't mean that everything is clear, but it means at least that uh, uh, there is a hope. Yes, thank you. One and then yes. Hi, good morning. Thank you for your presentation. This is Alejandro Lanuza from the FedEx. And I was wondering uh, if you have had a look into the business model or study the business case of these applications. I believe that um, maybe, yeah, it's the question is for everyone, so yeah, who wants to start first? Yeah, please, yeah. Yes, so thank you for the question. Um, so f from the perspective of uh, Omicron, let's say we have, uh, as I said, four targeted areas, uh, inspection, um, mm, predictive maintenance on two sides, and then intervention uh, and uh, construction and retrofitting. So uh, let's say the um, inspection uh, market uh, has been studied. So we are focusing, let's say, on um, automation via drones and via 
uh, enhancing how we capture information from terrestrial vehicles. Um, and we believe this is a uh, big uh, market and it uh, has a lot of potential. Um, with respect to predictive maintenance, uh, perhaps it's more incipient, but uh, it will make uh, true changes once it is fully implemented. So we uh, talk about a, a lot about the digital twins and decision support tools and stuff, but in the end we have to narrow it down to specific use cases in order to have specific applications in order to be able to put, in, put them into production. And uh, with respect to the application of robotics, um, in a, the approach in our project was to have a platform that could do, as I said, not one, but many uh, intervention actions um, that uh, so that there was a business case that was not targeting just one uh, very small application, but any well, or, or many uh, extra ordinary, extraordinary, or emer emergency intervention action. So, yeah, that's more or less what I can say on my side. Um, thank you. Um, uh, okay, um, according with the comments of, uh, of Jose, um, in our case, um, our project, the main focus uh, of the project is um, to develop solutions to um, to solve the problems around the uh, maintenance uh, works in roads, right? Um, you must consider that is a research and innovation action, right? Then the final TRL of the solutions must be about seven, more or less, right? Then uh, it's important, the, the business models, and it's important as well, but it's not the main issue at this moment of the project, right? And in our case, uh, we are in the, in the month uh, 18th, and in our case, uh, this issue will be um, studied in the, in the, in the more in the advance of the project, in the solution, when the solutions are more close to the final, and considering the state of the solutions, and in this case, I, I guess, is the moment to analyze the possibilities to achieve to the market and considering another uh, alternative solutions, etc. right? Yeah, uh, from uh, my side as well, it's uh, the comments are similar to what Jose and Pedro have mentioned. We are quite early in the project to have established a very specific, at least, uh, exploitation plans. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we uh, during the we take uh, we, we have some plans to uh, base, basically to to inform the technological development procedure so we we do not let's say have business plans of how exactly the platform that we're developing is going to be uh, exploited by our partners or by other uh, institutions in the future this happens usually when you have you know the established solution and we are still in the de in development mode but we are taking into account all these aspects when we are developing just so that we have a modular system that can be integrated in different areas that we can as uh, jose mentioned uh, do ne the the necessary maintenance procedures to maintenance interventions to actually uh, address specific market needs uh, so this is the plan uh, this is the status for here on uh, we we have plans that are mainly now uh, informing the technological development, let's say, rather than actually the, the business plan aspect of the of the project. Thank you very much. I, we, I was invited to sit, so now I see the room <laughs> from a different uh, angle. Yes, please. Uh, no, no. Yes, uh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sergio Escriba. I'm head of sector in CIMEA, working together with uh, Claudia and the unit of transport research. My, my field of uh, work now is uh, automated transport, so my question is directed to, to that point because those machines that you are presenting uh, are really automated vehicles as well. They are big machines that will be uh, working together with the passing vehicles in, in roads that are under operation. So there is somehow uh, uh, similar risks of, uh, I don't know, false maneuver, uh, loss of control of the machine. Going on that uh, direction, there is a lot of work in the 
automated vehicle sector on the security of data, avoiding ha attack, uh, uh, hacker attacks to the to the vehicles. I would like to know if in your project you are considering as well some uh, cybersecurity measures to to protect the machine from external attacks. So who wants to start first? There are probably two 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 aspects: cybersecurity on one hand, and also the maybe the maybe some, somehow the software that uh, stop working well and then the vehicle does not make the right maneuver. Yeah. You can start. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, regarding the cybersecurity part, let's say, uh, we have, uh, we're, we're currently starting working on that in the communication, let's say, uh, because we need to establish the communication infrastructure both for cybersecurity issues, but also for service, service provisioning issues, because uh, obviously uh, what you are doing, and this comes back to also the safety, the actual safety, usually the problems are that at the edge you do not have the computational capabilities to actually make, make that much informed decisions, rather when you have access to servers and uh, you know, to, higher, to bigger computational machines, let's say. Uh, so we're establishing the, the communication interface, both for the service provisioning uh, part, but also uh, for uh, th this, this communication, let's say, uh, stack, where we are also taking into account exactly uh, cybersecurity issues and uh, uh, encrypting, let's say, the, the data that uh, we are gathering, especially when we are uh, you know, because the, the plan for all the project is to continuously monitor the road. So essentially the, the, the knowledge there is that we are going to have a very detailed idea of what the road is going to be when this is actually implemented on real life uh, scenarios. Uh, regarding the, sec the security, the actual security of personnel of, uh, you know, the traffic accidents, stuff like that, uh, all three projects I think we have uh, very specific APIs for reducing traffic accidents. Uh, all of us, we are also doing, uh, if you saw one of the, main, of the common characteristics, I do not want to talk for other projects, but we are, also, we are all dispensing traffic cones, we are all isolating the area uh, beforehand. I would say for Heron, uh, the biggest aspect uh, that, uh, in my view, are, is going to, uh, to have uh, an impact on security is uh, the planning phase, is that we can actually uh, using drones, using, uh, you know, cameras, have a very clear idea of the intervention and we can plan it when we do not have that much traffic flow so there is, a, you know, a lower uh, possibility of accident. Uh, we can plan it and do it fast so we do not essentially disrupt that much of the traffic flow and minimize the time of the intervention, which essentially all those things, I think, minimize the probabilities of accidents. Um, hi, Sergio. Um, okay, in relation with your uh, question, um, uh, let's say a couple of things. Um, the first, um, in our project, we have identified two different levels of communication, right? <clears throat> the first one is the communications between, to the in the local uh, place, the communications between robots, between machines, the communication of the power machine with the con robot systems, etc. Then uh, at this level, um, in, I guess perhaps the possibility to for external attacks is, is lower. But however, uh, our uh, other level of communications is between the our systems, our solutions with the traffic management system that uh, um, that there is in the in the road, right? In, like in the case study that we will apply to our solutions. In this case, the risks of external attacks is, is higher, it's, it's true. Um, at this moment, with the develop of the, of the um, with the develop of um, um, our project, uh, we are solving the, f the, the problem to a uh, good, uh, to solve the problem of communications, the best way to solve the problem of communications between the TMS with our, our solutions, because um, uh, we have a lot of uh, problems to solve in relation with the uh, security that the, 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 the ongoing TMS, uh, uh, that the, the, 
the infrastructure are using, they have a lot of barriers, a lot of um, problems to solve to access to, to them, and this is the first issue. And to be honest, at this moment is not the at, the at this moment of the develop the project is not the best problem for us to think about the external attacks. But it's sure that in the future we must consider this potential problem. Yeah. So thank you, Sergio. I think you already identified the next area of research for maybe future calls. Thank you. Yeah, indeed, this is really a, an important aspect because we can <coughs> see that the development for the moment is more in the, uh, let's say, it's almost in, uh, autumn, let's say, or in, independent from the, the rest of the traffic and the rest of the, of the, let's say, the different uh, environment. There is another question. Yes. I'm Sam Alperzin, Suleiman Dunan University of Rome, Turkey. Yeah. And I'm happy to be here because of this more related with me. And uh, I'm looking for the civil engineering side. And uh, these, these projects is very important information for us. Actually, we need some additional information about that. And uh, we have a lot of visitors, uh, not only Fred and Paul. And a lot of this type, I if you works about that, and the other space type, if I'm very happy about that. And I hope to learn that. And and uh, the other side, uh, I'm working about the payment management system, and uh, this information very important for payment management system. But mm, our aim is the need estimation of the payment performance. And uh, do you have uh, any plan to payment performance? And uh, for example, payment condition index, payment serviceability index, or information roughness index, something like that. And uh, we need the information. What's the plan next? And uh, when we have the maintenance to road, and we would like to learn that, and we have to cost benefit analyze, and we have to share the budget to road. And uh, if you have a plan about uh, the other steps and uh, your project about that, thank you. So thank you for your question, and uh, we're glad that you are interested in the area. Well, in this uh, in this respect, I invite you to follow our external advisory boards, uh, in particular uh, ours that has a, an event soon. Um, <coughs> with respect to, um, let's say, the uh, condition analysis and stuff, uh, from the perspective of Omicron now, I can say um, that we tackle it in two ways. First one is uh, more on the sensing uh, side. So we, as I said, we develop um, UAV capabilities, multi-UAV capabilities, and long-range, low-altitude capabilities in order to improve the way in which we uh, capture um, reality. In this respect, we are focusing more on uh, all assets but pavement, okay? Um, then, uh, with respect to pavement, we focus more on the um, on uh, terrestrial inspection vehicles, in, on improving the way in which we capture uh, defects, uh, uh, potholes, cracks, etc. Um, but this is not uh, only it. We also uh, are working on specifically what you mentioned on uh, the computation of uh, parameters such as IRI or SFC. Um, the objective is to improve uh, the way that this is currently mm, being done and to uh, control, let's say, that these uh, processes are measured in a consistent and standardized way because, as uh, you know, uh, depending on how uh, the vehicles are placed and stuff, uh, results may differ. So this is what we are uh, focusing on now. Um, this, with respect to sensing, then with respect to uh, taking action of what we have uh, sensed, um, as I said, well, we work first of all on the integration of information on a on a digital twin on a uh, GIS beam uh, environment. In this respect, uh, for um, linear um, assets and linear re registries, more even uh, on the GIS uh, side. Um, and uh, we also work on the process of this information uh, in order to um, provide, um, uh, let's say, intuitive information from, for the road operator so that they can make decisions on specific sectors of the road that uh, would 
uh, yield, let's say, uh, cost uh, optimization, uh, service optimization, service improvement, and also uh, take into account uh, the, the, the carbon footprint that uh, w the repairs that are going to be uh, made have on, 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 the, on the management. So these are, let's say, uh, things that are being developed. So we would be very glad to provide more information in the couple of months. Um, um, thank you uh, uh, for the uh, for the question. It's very interesting um, um, for me um, and is very relevant for our project. Okay, um, um, you must consider the main topic of the call is not to make a prediction of the behavior of the of the uh, assets of the road, right? And the best uh, um, or the most important uh, component of the call, the most important question is to solve uh, how we can robotize solutions for maintenance, etc. In spite of, of that, uh, in our project we have, uh, we are including um, uh, fiber optic sensors and to, to make a control of the evolution of the, of the pavement, but however we have not a specific task for make a prediction of the or foresee the behavior of the the asphalt and and these um, these uh, issues. Um, the, uh, this information will be an input from our um, robots, from our solutions. Um, but we have not dedicated a force in person months to this uh, prediction or this this kind of things. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Uh very similar comments uh, from our side as well. So uh, regarding the sensing, uh, we have showed a couple of results uh, for, uh, for our sensing. We can do, right now, we can do quite well uh, object detection, so we can identify uh, specific issues. For Heron, we are focusing on very specific interventions, and we feel that uh, we need to focus on this uh, to actually create workflows that work extremely well in uh, unmonitored condi conditions, let's say. And to do this, you need to start very specific. Uh, but uh, for uh, the sensing, let's say, apparatus, uh, the, the models can be easily extended to, to uh, have uh, additional, let's say, to identify additional objects or uh, other, other incidents. And we are also, uh, we have a very specific task of, the, of geolocating uh, the, sensing, the sensing data. So we are not only creating the, we are not only identifying the objects and where the, the issues are, but we are very specific on, not only on the local scale, but on the, on the global scale of things. And similarly to, uh, we are also developing incident management systems, decision support systems, uh, to, to actually showcase uh, the results. But we are not, for the prediction of, the, uh, of what's happening in the road infrastructure currently, uh, at least this is not under the purview of, of Hiron as well. Uh, we are targeting very specific maintenance interventions rather than having, uh, you know, a more life cycle assessment, let's say, uh, and predictive capabilities for life cycle assessment of roads. Very good. Is there another other question? <coughs> yes? <coughs> Please, yeah. Uh, hello, Ilias from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Uh, thank you for your presentations. I have a question I saw on a slide by Jose uh, VTX, and I was wondering to which degree uh, all vi vehicles are intrinsically connected and they have sensors of all kinds, to which degree they can complement this technology and uh, uh, render them more attractive by the sense that they can replace some actual devices. So in this respect, I can go a bit more into detail on what we do on V2X uh, in the project uh, in order to clarify. Um, so what we, uh, as, as you know, these uh, projects are heavily uh, focused on maintenance actions. So what we try to do is to provide 
connecting to uh, uh, connected intelligent transport systems, we try to provide further information on the state of the uh, road and the state of traffic to the to the user. Um, in this respect, uh, we are uh, working on uh, providing various information such as, uh, well, apart from weather, uh, traffic, etc., uh, also where maintenance vehicles are, uh, where there is uh, an accident or where there's some uh, emergency um, uh, intervention actions being taken place, um, which is then uh, interesting or is then relevant in order to have a uh, smart routing or uh, smart, um, um, let's say, management of the traffic around a particular area in which maintenance is taking place. So the approach for Omicron in this uh, respect, our, uh, let's say, uh, step uh, beyond uh, what uh, is currently uh, done is to connect uh, maintenance uh, management to uh, traffic and to uh, improve the information that the driver and the uh, uh, road uh, manager uh, has uh, on the table. Basically. Yeah, yeah, please continue. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> I was thinking something more of the other way around. When a car goes through a pothole, mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure that even the smartphone accelerometer yeah. will get this information. Yeah. It would be interesting for you to capture this information. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, that's, uh, let's say, exactly the, the other way around and for sure it is interesting in the end uh, you gather a lot of you may gather a lot of information from from just the uh, vehicles passing by and uh, let's say sensing what, what is actually going on whether there's a pothole or there's a, a congestion area or there's a well crack would be a bit more difficult but um, you may uh, um, sense all this information via accelerometers cameras whatever and this may feed back to the to the man to the maintenance uh, uh, contractor. So yes, definitely, it's a very interesting area of research. Um, um, this is a very interesting topic that you you arise, um, and is um, and is very interesting. Uh, no, just thinking about this project is a, a research area with a lot of interest. But in my short experience, the main barrier about that is to access to the data of the cars, right? And it's um, normally is um, the access to this information is very restrictive and is uh, difficult to to access and to download download of. of or another process with this information is, is complicated. The owner of the car normally um, protect this information, I think it's in not, in not in an open way. But it's very, very interesting. Good, there is also another question. Uh, Ilona Alexian from CEA. Um, I just have a question about um, Collaborative ro robotics. I don't know if you explore this uh, uh, specific uh, kind of uh, robotics. And uh, do you explore also the interest of uh, HMI, advanced HMI, to support uh, road workers? I can I can start. Um, yes. So uh, in Omicron, uh, we. Um, use, uh, in certain use cases, we explore um, uh, collaborative robotics. Um, for instance, one of the videos I showed is on uh, the replacement of safety barriers. So in this respect, um, the idea is to have the uh, robot to put the uh, safety barrier, which is long and difficult to manage, uh, to a certain position. And from that point, uh, the uh, road operator actually interacts with the robot in order to uh, place it in the in a particular uh, in the right position and then uh, use it so there's that degree of collaboration also via vr and ar as you uh, uh, may see in the in the uh, slides that i that i showed and um let's say it is an area that um, uh, uh, very well uh, joins with 
uh, enhance uh, HMI. So at this point in, in the project, we are actually starting to develop the uh, HMIs. And uh, yes, uh, we are building on previous experience, but uh, right now we are on uh, the first stages of, on this, and I, we think it's a very important point. Yeah, uh, for uh, for Hiron, so uh, regarding the robotics part, uh, this needs to happen quite a lot, especially uh, when you need to, uh, e even before in the sensing uh, uh, stage, let's say, of the intervention, you need quite a lot of uh, collaboration between different unmanned vehicles because a lot of times, especially when you're talking about drones, uh, drones are not really it's not really easy to integrate multiple sensors uh, on, uh, you know, on small drones, so you might need cross-modality information and you might need collaboration in the way that these uh, drones, let's say, move in order for you to get uh, multimodal information about uh, the asphalt uh, in the planning stage. And obviously during the execution, uh, based on different workflows, uh, you might need multiple uh, vehicles deployed to, you know, to dispense the cones and then uh, uh, patch the, the pothole. Uh, so we are doing quite a lot of uh, collaboration between different robots, uh, both uh, from the ground and also having uh, information uh, from drones uh, informing what's happening in the ground vehicles. Regarding the interfaces, we are also developing a decision support system where, uh, with AR and VR capabilities. Uh, we are not really focusing our research on HMI aspect. We are developing the interfaces, but it, it's something that we do for visualization and we are not really... Uh, we are developing the front-end interfaces, but we are not really uh, uh, do research on the, the HMI aspects, at least in Hero. In our case, in the infrared project uh, case, um, we, work, uh, we will work with uh, collaborative robots um, in, in the sense of uh, the machines, the paper machines uh, will work in collaborative mo mode with the, uh, con with the cons, with the um, uh, robot cons, right? Um, because uh, our intention, at the same time, in, in um, they will work with the uh, drone. Um, the drone will gather information of the environment and transfer this information to the central platform. And the platform uh, uh, will know the position of the different cones and the position of the machines for power and, and these things. And our intention is all the robots are moving at the same time, right? And considering the restrictions uh, uh, for safety about the distance, the minimum distance with the border or with the, okay, with the, uh, for the, for cars, um, 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 at moving, etc. And this is our plan um, um, to, to solve, and, and it's, it's true that we, uh, we need to work in this way, okay, with a collaborative robots uh, to know the position and to give uh, uh, signals to move, etc. right? Well, are there any other questions? Yes, two one. Yes, just in front. Thank you for your presentation. My name is Sao Mei from Carlos III University. Uh, of Madrid, and uh, <coughs> my question uh, because uh, I'm working on the area of traffic uh, information, traffic uh, management, and uh, control. So my question is uh, something about traffic, traffic conditions. Um, for your opinion, or maybe for your experience in your project, how can you assess? the data of traffic uh, management uh, system. I mean, for example, in which channel you get the information or communicate with this system? And uh, in, your, in your robot or in your system, who do uh, the evaluation of traffic condition? The robot or your system, or you just uh, believe or c you convince the information that you get from the traffic management system. 
Uh, yeah. So uh, the for for Huron, uh, the the traffic the the traffic the the road operator uh, is actually the one who has all the information. So the robots are, uh, do not assess traffic per se, uh, but uh, with the sensing that we have, we can uh, 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 through the interfaces that we are developing, we can uh, essentially give all this information uh, to uh, uh, to, the, to the to the manager uh, to take the decisions. We are not uh, integrated with traffic management systems, let's say, at least for the project, obviously, when this is deployed in, when this would be deployed in real life scenarios, all these things would be need to be integrated. Uh, but for right now, we are mainly focusing on, first of all, sensing uh, to, uh, to, uh, to understand what is happening there, and then deploying the robots and uh, uh, establishing very specific maintenance procedures uh, to fix uh, very specific things. The decision of when this is happening, the uh, you know the the assessment of the traffic uh, of how we can uh, with this affects traffic goes back to to the operator and not a decision that the system at least uh, makes. Some suggestions are going to come for, through the decision support system, but this is not going to be integrated at least in here. Yeah, you want to add something else? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sorry. In our case, in the infrared project, the, the, uh, before we talk about the, mm, the inputs of our project, uh, must be the information about the state of the pavement, etc. But in this case, the output of our project will be information for the traffic management system, right? And the traffic management system must be considered and the, uh, the information that our robots and our systems are supplied for, for the system and to organize uh, and to, to take a decision about how the traffic must be organized, right? Then uh, our, um, uh, the, the results of our project must be the inputs of the traffic management system. I don't know if I am giving answer for, those, for your question. I think uh, that's the point. Uh, my question exactly is uh, how can this data be the input? For example, real time or uh, just uh, as a report or something? How can you how can you do that? Um, just just uh, to, for to finish. Uh, in our case, it's in real time. It's sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you. I mean, just to complete uh, from the perspective of uh, Omicron, it's more <coughs> or less the same as uh, what uh, my colleagues have said. Um, uh, let's say we, pr we w could be providing information, but within the project, we do not mm, work so much on the connection to the uh, traffic management system, apart from certain use cases uh, following a uh, previous question on V2X, where we try to integrate the information uh, from the maintenance and also from traffic flows in order to provide more information to the user. But currently, it's not the main area of research of our project, but it is uh, indeed uh, an interesting area to be explored uh, in, the, in the future. Very good. So I think we can have maybe one uh, couple of last questions. I've seen Sergio. So Sergio, please. Thank you. I have many questions, but let's... Uh, well, uh, <laughs> a set, a set of questions. <laughs> one, one, okay. Yeah. Uh, all the three projects aim to finish at DRL 7. Uh, next steps could be going closer to the market, but for that, you know, Sohi, we need a pull from the industry. We really need to be sure that there is a need. Uh, in other words, uh, these systems that are, in principle, quite expensive compared to the current practice manual work, uh, would require high investments from road operator, from construction, maintenance companies. What are the benefits that you can uh, offer them? Uh, how you would you convince them to put the money from their own pockets to continue and finalize the development of the, of the techniques and make them a reality? If I, if I may just add one complement to what he said, is, you know, it's linked to your um, 
impact, promised impact in a way of 20% uh, routine maintenance cost in a way. So all this is all in whole. Um, so if you can elaborate on that. So uh, when you consider uh, there, there are two, uh, two main pillars, let's say, that uh, I would consider in this. Uh, the first one uh, has to do with, uh, so d uh, essentially, wh obviously, wh when we're developing prototypes, uh, the, c the cost is uh, quite high. Uh, but uh, essentially, transportation is really the, you know, the, the field where it's really evident that when we industrialize this, so when we have a product that okay, it, it, it should do very specific things and it should be on TRL9. This means that it's done that and it also has considered cybersecurity issues. It also has considered HMI issues. But when you are doing this on a more to scale, let's say, uh, granularity, the costs uh, come down uh, quite significantly, come down by orders of magnitudes uh, sometimes. Also, uh, the, uh, we have the, so actually performing maintenance, uh, it's quite expensive for a couple of reasons. First of all, because usually, at least in my experience, we're not really deploying, uh, you know, something for, uh, have, for fixing one pothole. You are doing it in larger areas for larger issues. So this uh, affects traffic because you need a mass of issues to uh, to have a, a, to actually have a financial benefit for actually performing the intervention and also you have quite a lot of costs for traffic disruptions in this case because this would take more time uh, and you need to deploy quite large number of people to to do the uh, i think that in here on uh, and all the robotics that we are developing we can have a really, uh, the, the return of investment, I think it's quite uh, fast. If you consider, first of all, the industrialization part, that we are obviously bringing the cost down and the, the, the development of the prototype is not the same as developing the actual to product for the market. And also because when you are doing targeted interventions in smaller scales, you, you do not need that much crew, you do not need that many people. And you do not need to uh, disrupt the traffic for that much time, especially when you are doing it in a robotic manner where you can do it at night. You can do it, you know, not during rush hour, which is not the case, uh, in at least uh, what things happening today, because you are actually closing the road or closing lanes for uh, hours or days or weeks to actually do uh, all, the th all the stuff because things pile up to actually have issues with uh, and deploying personnel. Maybe, you, you know, uh, before the other one prepare mm -hmm. their answer, uh, we had <laughs> a, uh, we had a level of complexity. Do, could you please try to identify where are the, let's say, the percentage of gain, you know, like you, you, you mentioned clearly, there would be a reduction of the number of people working, or workers. And so, on the contrary, you, you, the machine will also work faster. So, on all in that, do you have an idea of, let's say, all this contribution to this uh, cost reduction that you are mentioning, you all mentioned, by the way, in the three project? That would be really like going in the, in the more precise direction. Well, in, in this respect, um, <coughs> well, first of all, going with the theory, uh, I believe it depends on uh, precisely on the on the area that we tackle. Well, precisely in Omicron, we go from inspection to execution, so it's quite uh, specific to the to the action and the task and the current amount of workers that do you have in a specific site for I don't know replacing the barriers or or putting cones and stuff. Um, what I wanted to do. Uh, to um, add on on what uh, Nicolau said, uh, or that I believe it's a common goal for the three projects, which is uh, safety. Safety is, uh, as you said, as you may, may see, uh, one of the impacts uh, that the three projects uh, aim to tackle. So I believe um, the the increase uh, in safety on a, a particular workplace and particular workspace is one of the, uh, let's say, added values that th these three projects can bring 
to the um, to a particular um, road manager or road contractor in order to pursue or use uh, the, the solutions that we are providing. Um, once this is said, uh, again, costs are uh, very important and at some point, uh, well, currently, obviously, uh, at the development phase, uh, costs are large, but I believe as we are trying to um, industrialize, let's say, repetitive tasks and tasks that uh, can be more or less controlled uh, uh, with, uh, with robotized or automated uh, technologies, uh, I believe cost at some point uh, analyzing specific use cases may may come may come down, and I believe there is uh, for the three projects that is from now onwards, and we ha are already on it, uh, um, um, a very important uh, area of the research, which is building on the business models and building on how these uh, technologies and where uh, can be uh, particularly applied and provide, let's say, some. Uh, addition to what it's currently done. Thank you very much. So we are approaching slowly to the end of our uh, session. Um, you see we had one hour of discussion. Sometimes it looks very long at the beginning and eventually we are three minutes before the end. Um, maybe just before we, we conclude on, on, the, on the session, uh, I'd like just to have uh, a quick reaction from each of you um, about the, the expected impacts. So you focus them on uh, fatal accident, you said 50% reduction, traffic disruption, 20%, the maintenance, uh, let's say, operation reduction in terms of cost by 20%, and this would save up 20% of network capacity. Coming back to the question which was raised earlier about the performance of the infrastructure, so it can be pavement, it can be the structure itself. Maybe there is one um, critical, let's say, impact here which is not mentioned, or at least criteria, KPI, as you want to say, is about does this automated or slash robotized both together um, work as good as the human being at the moment, or can they help working better? So basically, do you could you foresee, uh, let's say, an impact there in terms of performance of the infrastructure thanks to the um, uh, robotization, the automation of the maintenance. And there, you know that there are a number of challenges related, for instance, for asphalt, you know, lay down and so on with the degree and so on, temperature to be kept. So could we expect that maybe with the robotized, uh, with the robotization, with the automation, this could uh, enhance uh, and uh, foster, in a way, the, um, uh, let's say, the optimization and, uh, and the performance? So my question or comment was long, but the answer <laughs> <laughs> should be fast, although I think it would have been also very interesting to speak about that uh, in a longer time. So maybe one quick word from each of you on that, please. So uh, from our side, uh, I think the answer is yes. I think that we can uh, show uh, the, the, uh, the unmanned robotized systems, uh, whatever, you know, the, the hybrid model uh, is going to be. Uh, if, so it's, it's answering a question. We're trying to optimize very specific workflows here. So we're trying to optimize very specific repetitive tasks. And technological development has shown that when you have an actual workflow, and you have very specific targets for that workflow, uh, autom automation is uh, quite easier. When you are going in the way, uh, a lot of things can happen. So uh, we believe that uh, both in time, uh, in co both in cost, uh, the, the end that the traffic disruption, I think, is something that speaks for itself. I think that when you have all the flexibility of deploying these solutions whenever you want and doing it very targetly, the traffic disruption speaks for itself. But when you optimize those workflows, uh, this becomes cheaper, this becomes faster, this becomes more resilient, this becomes more, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the performance uh, is really increasing when you are doing, when you have a clear idea of what, uh, what exactly you need to do and do this task very specifically. Jose, a bit faster if you can. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I will just add that uh, I believe with, I truly believe with respect to 
inspection and sensing, we go beyond what, what's currently being done. With respect to robotics, I think we need more time. We need more time, as uh, Nicolau said. And, uh, but I think it will come uh, after, after time, as, as, as you said. Mm. To finalize from my side, uh, we are on time. <laughs> um, the, the critical issue for me, under my point of view, is uh, how we can integrate all this information, right? And if this information is, is well integrated and is, um, if we, uh, all this data can uh, work together, then uh, the solution will be fine and will be achieve this this um, this um, this um, impacts right, but um, it's not depend of just the, the individual solutions. It's not critical, and in my point of view, and my point of view is how we can put together and working at the same time. Very good. Thank you. Thanks to all of you, and I think we can give you a big round of applause for this great project. So, um, to conclude, I think you know you all have seen the situation in France, the discussion about the pension, when we see this uh, potential uh, for the productivity thanks to the robotization automation. We may hope to live in pension maybe by the age of 50 in the future. <laughs> so with that, uh, let's go for the next uh, session. Thank you very much.